Okay, everybody. So this time uh, we're sort of building on what we did before. And what we did before was we had um, two versions of Newton's second law. We had a translational one and a rotational one. We were using those together. And that's what we're going to be using uh, again today, except the translational versions we're going to modify just a little bit. So let's start up here in the upper right hand corner. And uh, I want to bring your attention to this guy uh, with the green highlighting here. So we're calling it F sub N, and that's M, M, M omega squared. Uh, do you recognize the omega squared R part? That's centripetal acceleration. And so what we have here for our F is this is an F in the normal direction. Okay, so that's going to be towards whatever the pivot point is that we choose or that is appropriate in our problem. Okay. Um, now take a look at our other equation here in the pink. So it's an FT. So you probably figured out that that's going to be um, tangential. And you can see the M alpha term on there. And you can see the plus or minus on there. So you kind of know where this is going to go. We're going to have to align a translational acceleration with an angular acceleration, perhaps, and um, and then figure out, do we choose the plus or do we choose the minus? Okay. All right. Last equation that we're going to be dealing with here is we've got the rotational version of Newton's second law again, and I've written it as mx. Okay. And so we're going to sum the moment about a point x. Now, I just did this for the sake of being generic. So we can do that about any point like we have all along here. Um, and what's important is to match our moment of inertia term to the, the point of interest for our moments. So if we pick to sum our moments around the center of mass, then we need the moment of inertia about the center of mass. If we choose to sum our moments around some other point, then we need the moment of inertia around that point. Okay, sorry about that. I get, I get quite a lot of junk phone calls and um, I published a book in 2014 and I don't know, the last 12 months or so, I keep getting these phone calls and people are like, oh, Mr. Cadre, your book is awesome. We want to help you promote it. And they wanted me to pay him like 5,000 bucks or something like It's ridiculous. But anyway, back to the problem in hand. We've got a wheel, okay? And they give us the mass and they give us the radius of the wheel. And they give us the radius of gyration, okay? Now, we talked about that before, but we really haven't done a lot with that. And it's really easy to, um, to use that thing. Um, now, as we engage in these, it's important early on to figure out where we want to put our pivot. And usually a, a natural point is some axle or something. And so let's actually go ahead and use O as our little origin. Oh, let me pick a better color. Here we go. Just like that. We'll just use that point right there. Okay. And so that means when we get ready to sum our moments, we're actually going to want to sum those moments around the center of the wheel. Okay. And so let's go ahead and, and figure out what our moment of inertia is. All right. They have told us that the mass is um, 100. <laughs> this is a heavy wheel. All right. And so our moment of inertia about that is equal to mk squared, where k is the radius of gyration. All right, so we're going to be looking here at 100 on to 0.5 squared. Okay, and so that works out to be 25. So we got that, that taken care of there. Okay. Um, 
So let's go ahead and work out what the angular acceleration is on this thing. Um, and so we'll start with that equation in blue, the moment one. And with our pivot at the center, the only moment that exists is the one generated by P, the 100 Newton force there. And so we're going to have P times the radius is I0 alpha, or alpha is just going to become P R over I0. Okay, now my moment is actually negative, so I need to pop, plop that guy in there. Boom, boom. And then we just put in our values, 100 point, ooh, is that right? Yeah, 0. 0.6. And then I0, which we found to be 25. And when we do all that, we get a value of negative 2.4. Okay, and that's going to be radians per second squared. Okay. Okay, now we did that, but we, uh, we, we actually got to go back and read the question pretty carefully to make sure we're doing the right thing. Uh, because the question actually says determine its angular velocity when t equals three seconds. Okay. Now we've got the acceleration. The acceleration is constant, which is pretty cool. So we've got to do a little bit of kinematics work now. And we can choose SAM. Okay, remember the linear version of SAM is to say that the final velocity is the initial velocity plus A delta T. If we use the rotational equivalent of that, which is a good idea here, then we've got omega final is omega initial plus alpha delta t. And we're starting at rest, so this initial term is zero, and we're left with minus 2.4 times our time interval, which is three. So our final angular velocity becomes, uh, what is that, 7.2? Yeah, negative 7.2 radians per second. Okay, let me uh, hide that real quick. There you go, 7.2, not minus 7.2 radians per second. Okay, all right, now that, that concludes the problem. I, I want to illustrate a couple other things for you though. Um, let's take a look at the equation in green, um, the normal force equation. All right. Um, again, this is not required for this one. I, I just want to illustrate for you. Let's see what our other forces are that are acting on the wheel here. And we know we've got mg down. Okay. So when we're thinking now, we don't we we don't really want to think x y, but we kind of still do, but not really, but we do, but not. Okay, so we're going to play this little game. We're going to go back and forth. All right. So in a rotational sense here, the way the way this thing is rotating, okay, what works pretty well is to say that there is some O in facing the top or, or pushing upwards. Okay, and that's the axle acting on the wheel. And then there's some OT, which is pushing back that way. Okay, so this is really like an X and a Y. And it's perfectly fine to think about it as an X and a Y. Now, when we do that, and we go to our normal force summation, then we end up with um, that tangential of, oh, sorry, not the tangential, the normal O sub N minus MG, okay? Now, R in this equation is from the, the point of rotation to the center of mass of the, of the object. And in this particular case, the center of mass of the object is the point of rotation, and so R is zero. And so we find which, what is perfectly obvious that the axle has to hold up the weight of the wheel. 
Okay, but the axle has to do some other stuff too. All right, notice there P is 100 and it's off to the right. We're going to have to have some leftward force to balance that out. And that's what OT is going to do for us. Let's take a look at that in our, in our tangential force summation equation. So here we're going to have P minus OT. Okay, and again, R is the distance from the rotation point to the center of mass. And again, so we have zero. And so OT just has to be P. And that makes a lot of sense because the center of mass of this giant wheel isn't going anywhere. Okay, so we're applying a force, uh, P, but the whole thing has to be in equilibrium in a translational sense, since it's not going anywhere, okay? Now, in a rotational sense, it's not in equilibrium. We had that acceleration, okay? So the name of the game in all this section is going to be take these three equations, all right, figure out what direction are we going to call tangential, what direction are we going to call normal, and what are we going to use for our pivot? Keep everything very carefully align, keep track of everything very carefully, and these will fall out pretty nice and neat.